Hello, my name is Erlinette Richards. I'm a wife of Reverend Brian Richards. I come from Philippines and I've been here in Australia for about 13 years. I'm very proud being Australian. And before I sing a song, I would like to you to give you my favorite scriptures in Psalms 23, 1 to 6. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Gather I walk to the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. The rod that stop thee comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me, all that dwell in the house of the Lord forever. chapter 1 7 for God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power love and sound of mind I would like to give you another song people need the Lord Oh, 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 oh. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Brian Richards and collectively we are the Word of Faith Ministries International. When we go overseas, that's uh, who we introduce ourselves as. Because I'm a graduate of Kenneth Hagen, uh, who's gone to be with the Lord now, but he left a ministry called the Word of Faith Ministries, and I am a graduate of that. Um, <clears throat> so we are registered in Australia as Word of Faith Ministries, Australia. And uh, while we're at home, um, I look for as many weddings to do as I can, and uh, that supplements my income while I'm at home. So uh, we have marriage celebrants, and we call ourselves Divine Connections. If you have one of my uh, calling cards, business card, he will have Divine Connections on there. So we pray for... Uh, the people that we meet, the people that we minister to, the people that we have to do deal with, you know, that sort of thing. So everything in our life is, it comes by divine appointment. Our finances are controlled by our faith, which is by divine appointment. We have finances to go to see you. Where you in India, Africa, uh, Malaysia, um, Philippines, USA, or wherever you may be today watching us, we say good day to you. Good day, good morning, good afternoon, wherever time of the day it is, we wish you well. We want to give you our revelations from the Word of God, and uh, I have written a few books over the over the years that I've been comforting over a, a car accident, taken some time to recover from. However, the goodness of God and uh, the divine healing of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord, has just about healed my body when it was broken and, uh, and raised me level of thinking uh, so I can minister again. And so, you know, from a, a broken back, couldn't walk, and uh, not much uh, uh, hope for me to, to walk and do the things that I love to do. But uh, yeah, and I'm 69 years old, and I'm back doing the things that I used to do. And, uh, and so we, we are available. Uh, my lovely lady that you heard singing just now, and my son is going to come and read from uh, one of my books that I, I wrote. And we, we are available to visit you wherever you are in the world. And uh, it's only by faith that we can do that. It's only by people's uh, making love, gifts and uh, offerings to us that we can do that. So the books that I have written, they are available on uh, trafficbuilder2.com you will see uh, books that I've written and that are available on hard copy but they're also available on um, electronic downloads so if you be on my mailing list I'll make sure that you get uh, a pretty good taste of the material that I, I've written over the years and uh, it will be free Electronic downloads are free for me, so they'll be free for you if you are on my mailing list, which is revbrianrichards.com. You'll see there an autoresponder. You put your details in there, your name and email address. We'll get back to you and give you a copy of, of a book that you maybe have looked at on the website you can see the books and you can read the first 10 pages whatever book you desire you can request it by being on my mailing list i'll send it to you free electronic download however if you desire to have the hard copy like you'll see joshua come now and read a couple of pages from one of my books called the sons of god 
We have been ministering over the last few weeks on the maturity of Christianity. I've got it written up there on the board, along with a couple of scriptures there to remind me of the highlights we're going to um, read. And um, <clears throat> last week I mentioned a scripture that I didn't quote because I didn't know where it came from. So I'm just going to quickly read that now. It says in Psalm, Let the Lord build the house, we labour in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. It is a vain to rise up early to set up late. I'm guilty of that, so I'll repent of that, Lord. Um, to sit up late and to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives us his beloved sleep. Isn't that nice scripture? You know, you read that uh, any time you can't sleep, you get up, open up the Bible at the Psalm 127 and say, Lord, you give your beloved sleep and you go back to bed and wonderful thing is you sleep. So, you know, the word of God is, is good and uh, God is faithful to his word. So whatever you put your faith on, I believe it will manifest in your life. And so we preach the word of faith to you today and uh, Joshua is going to read a, a couple of um, pages there but I'll just read, uh, go on further because he talks about Joshua, alright? talks about you Joshua, so listen to this. It says, Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Okay, so... As sorrows are in the hand of the mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is a man who has his quiver full of them, and they shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies at the gate. Now, when he says to speak in the enemies of the gate, he's got a little number two in my King James Version, and in the margin, it tells me what number two means. It says, they shall speak with the enemies in the gate, he says, or shall subdue or destroy the enemies of the gate. You know, it just didn't say I will, it says my children will. So I got one, so that's a big responsibility for Joshua. We've got to swing the um, the camera around and Joshua's waiting to, to do his part. We pray. Father, I thank you for my son and my beautiful wife who's going to minister now and uh, I'll come back later. Thank you Lord for the anointing of grace in Jesus name. Amen. So we swing around and there's Joshua over there waiting. Is that correct? Is that good? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Stop. Oh, uh, hello, my name is Joshua Brown Richards. Today I'm going to be reading our dad's book, Sons of God. Um, you can buy this book at trafficbuilders3.com. Uh, and, uh, I mean, you can um, uh, go to trafficbuilders2.com and get this book. There's other ones at trafficbuilders3.com. And you can subscribe to dad's mailing list at reverendbrownrichards.com. <coughs> I'm going to be reading pages... 23 and 24. Remember to like, comment and subscribe if you're on YouTube, Daily Motion or whatever you're on. Stop thinking so much and start to listen more. What you need is not in your mind, it's in your heart. Knowledge and understanding are good things, but the answer you're looking for will come from your heart and not your mind. You've got to have hunger to hear him better and then put you must put forth some effort to help make this a living reality in life. Never think you can reason yourself out of predicament and that comes your way on intellect alone. It's not going to happen. More, th t more times than not, you'll, you will be in a situation out of situation where you don't have the answer you need and you're unable to figure the solution out on your own. You don't need know as much as you think you do. So if uh, all you're doing is relying on what's in your mind, then you will soon experience a rude awakening. What you need is help from above 
Divine direction will come to your heart and from there will bring enlightenment to your understanding. God knows everything and he lives in your heart, so why try to figure out things on your own? It doesn't make sense if you do. Those who you think are super spiritual are, in truth, not all that much different from you. What sets them apart is they've learned how to listen to God, to hear from God. You've got to first acknowledge Him in all your ways. This means you've got to be continually aware of God's presence inside of you and you need to be looking to Him night and day. You need to be, you need to check in with Him concerning everything you say and do. Don't assume anything but hum yourself and ask God for divine direction when you do that. His spirit will bear witness with your spirit and you know what to do. If you don't seek direction and attend to his words, then don't blame God when trouble happens. It is foolishness and ignorance to blame God for your mistakes, especially when he was trying to help you all along. He was speaking, but you were listening to something else. You need to start paying attention to the voice of God. Every day, you choose what you're going to listen to. If you make the right choice, it will help you, whereas the wrong choice will hurt you. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 10 says, Hear, my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of your life will be many. That in itself should motivate you to listen when God speaks. Living a good life is not automatic. The length of a, the length and quality of your life is greatly affected by how well you pay attention to God and esteem His words. Do not disrespect God by being casual in the way you listen. It is possible to hear something but not to have it registered down in your heart. It's, it is possible to hear and yet not hear. Matthew chapter 13 verse 13 saying, James chapter 1 verse 19 says, Let, oh, Matthew chapter 13 verse 30, you've got to attend to his words and pay attention to what he is saying. James chapter 1 verse 19 says, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Most people have this backwards. They're quick to mad and, and get upset. They're quick to talk and they're slow to hear. Everybody is a good listener. One of the most respectful things you can do for another human being is generally listen to them and care about what they're saying. It's hard to do this if you're doing all the talking. This is why you have to talk less and listen more. Dad will now come back on. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Very good. Well, we thank God for our children. Um, tell them there that... Um, that uh, our children will be the one who will destroy the enemies. Uh, um, Psalm 127, it says, um, uh, verse 4, it says, As an arrow are in the hand of the mighty man, so are the children of the youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. Well, they shall be, they shall not, be ashamed but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate and you know what is taught about a quiver is like you know uh, uh, arch you know when you have a bow and arrow you have something to put the arrows in and so he's as happy as a man who's got his quiver full of, uh, of children you know like he <laughs> got his hands full of children or, he, or his quiver full of arrows you know because your children be like a an arrow that you take and shoot out you know say look i've got an enemy over there go and fix him up <laughs> virtually you know this paraphrased version that's my version of it uh, but that's what it's saying to me that you know as i get a bit older which i am again i'm getting a bit older if i do have any enemies i say judge we got a, a a person over there we just want you to set him straight you know and go over there and, and talk to your enemy and say now listen here you want to fight we, you have to fight me to get to my dad you know <laughs> and uh, really it's scriptural to be like that you know so praise god i've only got one he's a mighty man of valor and he shall uh, take on an army if he has to before they get to me okay so i'm happy to uh 
to have written uh, that book. With the help of my other colleagues, we put together uh, uh, The Sons of God, and uh, it's, uh, it's probably the, the best material I've written so far. Uh, however, we got uh, on Sons of God, we got uh, a part one and a part two, and a part two is better than a part one. <laughs> So uh, I don't know if the Lord is going to inspire me to write any more books, but I'm very happy with what I've done so far. And I would like you to be blessed with that. If you cannot purchase a copy of my book, uh, just be on a mailing list and I'll send you an uh, electronic download and you get it free. However, the people that have purchased uh, uh, my books and also send donations for um, CDs, DVDs or uh, material, then your donations is what is being used to, uh, to minister to others in other countries. Now, I'm talking to Australians when I say that because a lot of Australians have given us donations and we've been able to go to other places and minister to them. And in case you haven't heard, um, last Christmas, which is a while ago now, um, they, we was able to give uh, sleeping mats and Bibles to prisoners in, in another country. So that's wonderful. And um, the Bible Society all over the world will do that for donations. And we, we, so we're going to give a, uh, we're raising funds now to give a donation to Uganda and so we hope uh, people will give for that purpose because there a minister on our mailing list who is desperately asking for Bibles we'd like to meet that need so please give generously and you'll see on our website a, uh, uh, a donation tab so you can click on that and you'll see how to give. All right. And that's in trafficbuilder3.com, which is a donation tab there. And uh, all those books that you see are electronically downloaded. And if you're on my mailing list, I'll make sure that you got uh, electronic download, whichever one you require. Okay. So that's, um, that's as far as we, we're at and um, I, I just wanted to reiterate a few, say a few things concerning what has been read out already that Joshua read out saying that um, attend to my words lots of times we hear and yet we hear here but we don't hear down here and that's what uh, Joshua was reading about it says in Hebrews, faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. So it doesn't come from hearing once. It says faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. I think that's Hebrews eleven seventeen. Faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. And so <clears throat> you have to hear it many times and eventually it gets into your heart so much so that when the pressures of life come on, up comes that word from your heart and you'll speak like Jesus spoke, spirit and life. He said, my words are spirit and they are life. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And of course, a lot of people quote that, know the truth and the truth will set you free. However, the verse before that says, if you are my disciples, you abide in my words, and my words will abide in you, and you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. God bless you. Here you're hearing the gospel. And sometimes uh, people say, Brian, you, you, you mix it up a bit. Well, we're not. I'm, I'm actually quoting the scriptures that other people leave out. And uh, sometimes by leaving out a scripture, you can make the word of God say anything. And, uh, and there are people around the world today 
preaching the gospel that is not the whole uh, the whole gospel you know the full counsel of God is all of the gospel not just the parts that we like and so for many years we've heard about um, tithes and offerings and we've heard about giving to the Lord and all of that so um, and we talked about the fivefold ministry gifting and all of that we we've, we've actually covered this in an, another video but I uh, just click quickly want to say that Ephesians 4 8 to 11 to 13 talked about the fivefold ministry gifting the apostle prophet evangelist pastor teacher uh, for the edifying of the saints to do the work of the ministry and that's what we are here for we as a, as a as a pastor as a teacher as a, a anointed prophet of God I want to tell you that I am here to serve the body of Christ we are not here for the body of Christ to give to us so we can pay the rent of the church we're not here to take the tithes and offerings off a congregation so we can pay our rent that is not what the church is all about the church originally started in Acts 2 40, uh, 46 where they went from house to house uh, breaking of bread meaning having communion and giving out the word of God and God added to the church we didn't have to go and evangelize God added to the church as many as he would call to be saved all right and uh, in, the, in, in, the, in the book of Acts there you'll see that 3,000 came to the Lord in one day it doesn't mean attendance it means 3,000 came and give their life to Jesus in one day and just to just in case some people say well that was a fluke as you read on in the same chapter 5,000 came in another day you know and it doesn't say that they went out and got them it says that the Lord drew them yeah. I went to a place in uh, called Bayawan in in in, in, uh, in, in uh, Negros Island in Philippines and uh, the population was approximately four and a half thousand uh, but eight thousand turned up at a at a meeting and how did we count them is we, we took the photographs of <laughs> of the people that turned up and we counted the heads in one square and then we multiplied the squares and it came up to around about eight thousand eight thousand people <coughs> and uh, they didn't know we didn't know I asked a question I thought well these people what's the population of this place and said oh about four thousand four and a half and I said well where do all these people come from there's more more than that here and they said well they followed you from the north of the island down to the south of the island and uh, so that's that's what happened now no one evangelized those people they came because the Lord drew them okay and so I'm a strong believer in allowing the Lord of God the Spirit of the Lord to do the work not to I know it says that we are co-laborers with him and we are to evangelize we are to be witnesses all those things are true but we don't have to um, conjure up some idea to get people to come into the church unless the Lord builds the church we labor in vain can you get that through your head unless the Lord builds the church we labor in vain we was not here last week we the week before we were ministering on the maturity of Christianity and we're up to a part nine I believe part nine uh, we'll put part nine slash ten just in case we got it wrong but between nine and ten we're up to that and this may be uh, going a bit more we don't know yet but we was uh, last week we had the privilege of uh, being invited actually to an outreach for 
uh, different churches. Um, the ecumenical meeting, though, I guess you would call it. I don't think they called it that, but that's what it was. It was uh, an ecumenical meeting um, in a park. And everybody participated from a variety of different churches. So that's good unity. Um, and that is the <laughs> that is their idea of creating unity in the, in the body of Christ. However, that is not what the Lord says, you see. That's the traditions of men that make the word of God to no effect. What is being said in the Bible as far as unity, and that is in Ephesians 4, uh, uh, Ephesians 4, 11 is it uh, Ephesians 4 11 I'll just quickly read it to you um, says Ephesians 4 11 says and he gave <clears throat> I mean this is the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead you know I mean he says the he he that descended into the lower parts of the earth is the same that he who ascended also. So this same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead, the power of the Holy Spirit, comes to us now in a, uh, Ephesians 4.11. But if in, in verse 10 he says that he might fill all things or fulfill all things. Okay, So this was prophesied from way back. Uh, he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry and for the edifying of the body of Christ till or until, same thing, till we all come into the unity of the faith. There's the unity, okay? Not the unity of denominations. God is not interested in denominations. I mean, he's interested in the people of the denominations. And he wants the people to be in unity, but he also wants their unity in the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto the perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So what we are preaching, the maturity of Christianity, over the last few weeks we've been trying to get to this place of unity of the Spirit because this word perfect and maturity I'm not I'm not talking about dictionary explanations I'm talking about biblical words that are here when the Lord says for the perfecting of the saints it's the same word as maturity so we've been ministering on maturity of Christianity and this is what we're talking about that when we come into the unity of the faith, we come into the maturity or perfection. Okay? God is causing his body now, body of believers, to be unified in the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto the perfect man, unto the measure of the fullness of Christ. And I believe that you stay healthy, and you stay alive long enough, you're going to see the fullness of the anointing. Because that's what the fullness of Christ means. Christ is not Jesus' second name. It means Christ, the anointed one. You know, Jesus, the anointed one, means Jesus Christ means the anointed one. Christ, the anointed one. And uh, if you receive the Christ, any man be in Christ, is a new creation. Okay, and uh, all things pass away, all things become too new. That's uh, 2 Corinthians 5 17 says that. And uh, if you have the fullness of Christ, the fullness of the anointing, then it goes on to say that you henceforth no more children tossed to and fro and carried, ab uh, carried about by every wind of doctrine by the sleet and the cunning craftiness of men that lay a weight to deceive. But speaking the truth in love will grow up 
into him in all things which is the head even christ hallelujah how about that amen which is all things which is the head even christ so we're growing up now in the fullness of christ to be with him and uh, something is happening right now we are at the last of the last days and i believe that we the unity that we're looking for the unity that we should be uh, experiencing is the unity of the faith in the knowledge of the love of god because that's what where the anointing comes from it comes from the love of god if you're walking in truth and in love it says here in verse 15 speaking the truth in love may grow up unto into him in all things which is the head even christ hallelujah how about that that you meditate on that for a while that'll be good and it goes on in 16 he says from whom the whole body fits fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supply according to the effectual working in the measure of every part makes increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love in what in love okay so what is the unity of the faith is the unity of the anointing and what is the anointing the unity of the anointing is in love <coughs> amen and if we are walking in that kind of love that kind of the unity of love we're going to see many thousands flock to jesus the churches will not be big enough to contain the people when we see people leaving one church and going to another uh, it's because they are looking for love true love and the true uni unity is in love the true essence of the bible the true essence of what uh, everybody really is looking for the truth and if we get mixed up in the crazy doctrines of you know, tithing you gotta you know you gotta tithe you gotta tithe all the you know the insane ways of people raising finances uh, i mean tithing was our uh, under the old testament and it's still really under the law if you're tired that's not saying you don't give you give surely you give but you give in love hallelujah mm -hmm. you know i was in a meeting one time uh, there was a a man desperately needed a car and uh, the visiting speaker said look there's enough of us here there's about 500 ministers surely that we can give uh, so this man can get a a, a a new car and you know i was on my way to philippines actually and i had about 500 dollars in my cash in my pocket and uh i, I was you know i was going to leave that meeting and the next day i was going to get on the plane and uh i thought oh well you know i'll give a tenth <laughs> i'll give 50 bucks and as i was going to give that the spirit of the lord uh said yeah well you keep the 50 and give them the rest i said that can't be no and i rebuked the thought i cast that down as a vain imagination sure enough the man uh, who was ministering on the platform he said of course you know you can keep the tithe if you want and just give the rest and god will be well pleased with that i guess he would and he was that day because i did exactly that and you know i thought to myself well can we still go to the philippines uh, you know i need that money see and uh, i had another uh, it wasn't appointment to preach it was another uh, appointment to see a man before i go to the philippines i actually wanted to confirm an appointment with him 
So when I came back, I would minister at this church on the way back to my own home, hometown. And uh, as I called in there, he says, well, you, you can preach today. I said, well, you know, I think it was the middle of a week, a Wednesday or something, you know, and I said, well, <laughs> I wasn't prepared for that, but thank you. Uh, so anyway, he says, uh, you, you, you're not going till the morning? I said, yeah, that's right. He said, well, tonight, it was, I think it was a Wednesday afternoon or could have been different. It could have been Thursday. I don't know when it was, but I preached that evening to a packed house. And there was uh, uh, Italian community, and they gave me a lot more than what I had in my pocket when I was at Brisbane. You know, they gave me uh, I was close to a thousand dollars. I think it was. Yeah. So I got on the plane with a thousand dollars in my pocket instead of five hundred. So you know, if I wasn't obedient to the to the Lord while I was in Brisbane. If I just gave them the 50, I don't think I would have, you know, nothing would have happened. But I told them what I'd done, and uh, I said, you know, give in obedience to God, not, not your tithe. I don't, you know, uh, I don't go for that tithing. I, I go for the love gift. The love gift would be far more than tithing. So, you know, um, we got to wake up. We got to grow up in the Lord and just live by faith and give by faith and receive by faith in love. And that's the maturity that we're looking for in Christianity. God bless you now. I'll let my wife kind of come and. Another song that inspire us. <clears throat> this song is entitled If We Hold On Together. Uh, popularized by Diana Ross, one of the great singers in the world. Uh, this song is about hope, love, and togetherness. If we hold on together, I know our dreams will never dry. Dreams see us true forever. So this one, this one is to each one of us, and I hope you like it.
for those people that uh, have requested prayer and uh, those people that uh, want to give their life to Jesus, then we're prepared to do that. We're prepared to pray for those people that want to give their life to Jesus. You know, making a decision for Jesus is probably the best decision you ever make in your life. And you can do that right now by allowing Jesus to come into your life. It says in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus rose again from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and by your confession is made unto salvation. So, will you pray now? I, I call those people that have just been sitting on the fence and been wondering about this Christianity, is it for real? Jesus wants to come and live within your heart and make himself real to you. If you would say this prayer with me, it will change your life forever and you will be born again. The Bible says in John 3, verses 3 to 5, Unless a man is born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So you can do that today. You can ask Jesus to accept you into the kingdom of God, to be born again, to be filled with his spirit. Heavenly Father, Heavenly say, this, Father. say this prayer with me. If you're watching, you say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. I believe Jesus rose again from the dead. I believe Jesus rose again from the dead. I accept him as my Lord. I accept it as my Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. Forgive me, Lord, for my past. Forgive me for my past. For all the sins. All the sins. Be purged from me. Purged from me. I give my life to Jesus. I give my life to Jesus. And I thank you. And I thank you. Because I believe. Because I believe. I receive. I receive. Right now. Right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you've said that prayer for the first time, we'd like to hear from you. So we can send you some uh, literature. We send you some material that will change your life forever. Material that you can... Uh, use in your church, uh, uh, preach, whatever you want to do with it, you can do, uh, but it's guaranteed to change your life forever. God bless you now, I'll leave you with the music. <laughs>
the Lord. You know what? I will give you a short testimony in my life. Nobody, this, I've learned this ukulele with my, by myself. And I'm always practicing every day, watching in YouTube. And I've learned this by the grace of God. I couldn't believe, I couldn't imagine that I can play like this. So, some people think that I have no talent. They cannot play any instrument. They cannot sing a song. But you know what? Each one of us has a talent. Not only singing, not only play instrument. If you can uh, in encourage with people, that's a talent. If you show your love to other people, that's a talent. So, whatever your talent you got, share to other people, especially to worship with the Lord. And my family over in the Philippines, we are nine children in the family. I got four brothers, can play guitar. You got a very nice voice. I have three sisters, can play guitar. I have my sister, youngest sister. She is able to play everything, any instrument. But me, I haven't got one. When I was in Philippines, I was a very shy girl. But when I come in Australia, somebody invited me to join with a singing group. And I have no idea, it's a ukulele group. So the leader gave me this uh, a ukulele to try with me. And I said, I don't know, I, I haven't learned with that. I don't know how to play ukulele. But she said to me, I have a go, Erlinet. So I uh, have a go. And I couldn't believe in one day I've learned two chords. And then I, I told to myself, oh, I got a talent. It's a genetic ta talent from God. <laughs> because uh, I realized my sisters and brothers can play. And I was really, I have no guts before, you know. I feel shy and uh, I feel afraid of anything. But when I come to Australia, I grabbed the opportunity and then I, oh, oh gosh, that's very expensive, you know, can feed a family over in the Philippines 30 bucks. So I told to myself, I'm going to print the chords. I'm, I'm going to learn by myself every day. I give time every day with good, uh, great determination. And I always pray, God, what if I can learn with this and I, I can sing a song? I can uh, minister to singing, especially with elderly people, or I can sing a song anywhere because my passion is singing. And God help me, God help me to encourage me that you can do it, Erlinet. And my husband also encouraged me all the time. You can do it. You can do it. And inspiring, he encouraged me that I can do all these things. And because of God's grace, I've learned with this. You know, without God in my life, I can do nothing. And now I'm very, I'm very proud of myself that I sing a song to in the nursing home. And I, I go to the nursing home every Wednesday and I sing with elderly people, with dementia people. And then I amaze with myself. I sing Christian song, I sing love song. And I amaze that they change their lives, you know. And people, they thought that their brain is dead, that they, they couldn't remember all the things. They are have dementia, they have sickness. But when I'm singing, I could feel that they sing with me and they're still remembering the, the songs that I'm singing. It's so wonderful, that uh, a nice feeling that you can make them happy, you know. And it's by grace of God and without God in my life, I have nothing. So I give all the things to God. You know, I lifted all the things to God. My passion is to sing a song, to, to give a joy with people's lives. And thank you, Lord. I would like to give you a song, thank you, Lord, because without God in my life, uh, I have nothing. So thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is from Don Moyen, but... but I'd like to show you my, my version, early net version. <laughs>
heart With a song of praise With our three songs I bless your name Thank you Lord I just want to thank you Lord Thank you Lord I just want to thank you Lord Thank you Lord I just want to thank you Lord I want to join in my life and my shame You took my sickness and healed all my pain Thank you One, we give thanks to you, God. We give thanks for your name. Is here mental or wonderful deeds? Thank you, Jesus, for all the things that you have done to us. Amen.